Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this Edge TX snippet, I'm going to show you how to use the timers function in logical switches. Okay, before we get into the content on this one, I have to let you guys know that this is kind of a thought exercise, right? I'm just going to show you some logic whether or not you can use this logic, that's up to you. I'm just going to show you some techniques in the radio that exist in case you can find a reason to put them to use. And I, I have a couple of use cases that might be, might be appealing to you. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is show you what the logic that I created does, and then I'll show you how it works. And I'm going to give you a quick little tour of my radio in case you're not familiar. I've moved my throttle lock over here. This is no longer a momentary switch. That's a two position switch. I swap mine. So this is my throttle lock and I'm going to turn my throttle lock off and that is the down position. So you'll hear me refer to my throttle lock that's over here on this side. Okay. And then the throttle, obviously I'm mode two. So that's over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you that I've got a flight timer and I have my flight timer set up for 10 seconds. Now, of course, that's not a normal flight timer. I'm doing that for expediency sake on the video. So I have a flight timer set for 10 seconds and it activates when I move my stick up and my throttle is unlocked. So the first thing I'm going to do is unlock my throttle. That's already done. The next thing I'll do is move my stick to the forward position and that'll get this timer moving. In just a second, we're going to pass the zero mark on our timer. timer one there it is. And this global variable will now start incrementing. The idea is to use that global variable to tell us how many seconds past our flight timer expiration we've gone. So you notice that these two are in very close sync right now, 24, 25, 25, 26, so on. So they're very close in time. To get a readout, the only thing I have to do is push this T5 switch up. 44 seconds. And I get a readout of 44 seconds on my overage timer. Okay, so that's one use case. Just a simple one to give us a readout on how many seconds passed our flight timer that we're actually flying. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is set up on this page. And the idea behind this one is to tell us how much time we've spent flying above 50%. So the idea here is real simple. If you're flying greater than 50% throttle, we have a timer that counts how much time you spend doing that. I'm going to go ahead and turn the throttle lock off. So the throttle lock is off. And now I'm going to move the throttle and you'll see that on my output screen, we're below 65%. There's no increment on GV2. I'm using GV2 for this one. So GV2, it's still at negative one. Time and as, one as I move my stick forward and advance the stick past the zero mark, which is 50% on an open TX or edge TX radio, we start to see this value increment. So there we go. Now I've got my stick above the midpoint. It's above zero. It reads 1%. And you can see that that GV is incrementing and I can get the value of my pedal to the metal timer by pushing up on T5. Before I give you the readout on this, I want to point out that I have the audio prompt set for minutes and I'll talk you through that in a minute. This is seconds, obviously, but you could do it for minutes. I'll show you how to do that. I just wanted to give a tag of minutes so you see that it could be done. Now to get the radio to read that out, all I have to do is pull down on T5. And we got 47 minutes. Again, it's not 47 minutes, it's seconds, but I want to show you the label. I'll show you how to do it. The two use cases I've shown you are number one, if the timer goes below the cutoff, so you get down to zero and you get below zero, the radio will start counting how many seconds you are past your timer. So that's this one right here. GV1 will start incrementing right there. We've got a one second, two second. Okay, so that's the first use case. And then the second use case is how much time are we spending with our throttle above 50% or above the zero mark on the radio? All right, let me show you how the logic works. To make all of this work, there are four logical switches. I've got L01, 2, 3, and 4. So for the timer, we're only using the first two. We'll start with L01. Let me explain what's going on within logical one. First off, the function is timer. That's what the video is really about, is using the timer function in logical switches. The second thing I want to point out is you've got V1 and V2 here. What those stand for is the amount of time that this function is on. So it's 0.1 seconds. And V2 is how much time this switch is off. In this case, it's 0.8. So you might say, well, John, that adds up to 0.9 and we're trying to get one second, why are we shorting it? And the answer is because after doing a little bit of 
mapping with the actual timer, it looks like the radio needs about a tenth of a second for processing. So by setting it to 0.9, I was able to keep time pretty accurate to about 60 seconds. So 0.1 and 0.8 will give you a combination that adds up to about one second. The next thing I want to show you is that we've got an AND switch. That's my throttle lock, so SH up. For any of this to matter, the throttle has to be unlocked. If the throttle's in the lock position, none of it matters because we aren't flying the plane if you have the throttle in the lock position anyway. Okay, that's L01. The idea here is that we've got a timer that stays on for one tenth of a second. It stays off for 0.8, that is total of 0.9, and with processing it works out to one second. So the idea is that L01 will flash every second, only when the throttle is unlocked. That's what this logic means. Now the next logic switch is L02. In L02, all we're doing is we're using a function of A is less than X, and we're looking at the timer flight. Flight is the name that I gave my timer. Let me show you what that looks like in my model setup. Okay, right here, you see how I've labeled this timer number one flight? That's where that word comes from. So I named timer one name of flight, and that's why in this box, I'm able to select that as a value for V1. So V1 is flight. Notice there's another one down here called total. That's my persistent timer. And there's another one below that called test, which is this timer number three. That's a test timer. So your timers show up in this list. I'm using flight for this example. And the V2 is what are we comparing flight against? We're saying if flight is below zero, A is less than X, if flight is below zero, then we want this logical switch to go on as long as L1 is on. That's the timer that goes on when I unlock the throttle. So every second that one beeps. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and you can watch it, it'll start flashing. I'm gonna unlock the throttle now and every second that's gonna, that's gonna blink. Right now, notice that this one's not blinking. The flight timer's not blinking because our timer right now is still set at 10 seconds. That one won't start blinking until that timer goes below zero. So I'm going to advance the throttle to get that timer moving. And now we'll go back to this logical screen and we'll watch for L2. When timer one expires, this will start blinking. Timer one elapsed. There you go. You see how L2 is now blinking? It's because both conditions are true. L1 is hitting its stride every second, and the flight timer is now below zero. Therefore, L2 is blinking, it's activating. And what L03 says is when the throttle input, notice that's the input, not the channel, not the output, that's the input. So once this input is greater than 50%, let's look at the channel monitor so you can make sure we're clear on this. You've got a value that says negative 100 when that stick is all the way down. And then when you move the stick to the midpoint, it reads zero. And then when you go to the full deflection at the top, it should read 100, okay? So it's negative 100, zero, 100. And that's why in this logical switch, we're looking for the throttle stick to be greater than zero, all right, greater than zero. And also the throttle has to be unlocked. If the throttle's not unlocked, we really don't care. It doesn't matter. We don't need a timer because the throttle's locked, our motor's not spinning, we don't care. Okay, that's the first logical switch. The next one is L04, and in L04, this should look familiar to you. It's the same thing as L01. It just sets another timer. It sets another pace, and this one combines with L03. You probably could combine the two. I could, I could potentially have used L01 as an option in here, but for clarity's sake, I just stuck with a second timer on the radio. So in L04, we have that same timer, 0.1 and 0.8, now here's the part where if you wanted, remember I mentioned the label for minutes, if you wanted to run this for minutes, you could simply switch this to say 50, I'd say 59 point, you have to do a little calibration, but probably something like 59.5, that'll probably get you there, maybe 59 point, maybe 60. The closest you'll probably be able to do is 59.5. So it won't be exact, like it's not a atomic clock exact, but it should get you pretty close. So if you set that for 59 seconds, what will happen is that timer will illuminate every minute. And that's why I was trying to show you earlier with the label that if you go back to the screen and you set it to be 59 seconds like that, what will happen is the uh, timer will increment every minute instead of every second. And that's why the call out says minutes instead of seconds. Minus one minutes. Okay, there, that's the idea. Now let's look at the special functions and we'll wrap this one up. 
the first three special functions I use to kind of clean house a little bit. So this is the throttle lock. SF1 says when SH is down, override channel 3 to be negative 100. That's how I lock the throttle. Very simple throttle lock, it's just for demonstration purposes. When we look at SF2, we see that the second one is to adjust a global variable. The idea is to reset the global variable. So every time you lock the throttle, it resets the global variables back down to a value to start with. Now, the reason I use negative one is because if I use zero, it got ahead of the timer a little bit. So by setting it to negative one, the very first increment sets it to zero. And that happens the moment you unlock the throttle. Okay, so negative one is used so that we restart at zero. And of course, we need to enable that. The second special function is the same thing, but it's for global variable number two, same exact settings. Finally, we can get into the special functions that do the work. So special function number five says when L2 goes off, remember L2 is the flight timer going below zero. So when L2 goes off, we need to adjust global variable one by one. We increment or decrement by one. So I have a plus or equals one, and of course that's enabled. And then the next line item is how we get the call out. So special function number six says when you press five up, we want to play the value of GV1 one time. And then SF7 adds the label behind it. So when you play five up, after it plays the value of global variable one, it says the word seconds. Next up on SF10, we have L04, and that will adjust the global variable number two, global variable number two by one. It increments it by one, just like the other adjustment. And then when we press five down, that's T5 down, we play the value of global variable two one time, and then we play the word minute one time when we press five down. I have one more thing I have to show you because you guys are going to ask if you don't know how to do this stuff, where did I get minutes and seconds? And there's actually a little bit of a trick to that. You need a USB cable and you've got to copy something from the system folder. I'll show you where it is so you can see it. So on the radio, if you go into sounds and then English and then system, there are two sounds in here that we have to borrow. The thing is you can't play tracks from the system folder, unfortunately. So what we have to do is go into this folder. So you need to find this file minute1.wave. If you're really a glutton for punishment, you can do an edit copy and move it into your play tracks folder, your non-system folder, and then rename it. If you're a glutton for punishment, honestly, I prefer just connecting a cable and doing it in my file explorer on my computer. So the idea is to grab this minute1 file. That's the first one you need. And then the second one you need is seconds and I use second one. You can scroll down to the bottom here, it should scroll to the top, and that double ellipse right there, you click on that, and this is the folder you wanna put them in, the EN folder, or whatever language you're using. The last thing you have to do is the audio files in your language folder have to be about five characters or less. So in my case, I renamed mine SECND, that's second, so if I press this and hit play, seconds. that's seconds. And then I can go up to minutes and here's minute. I just renamed it so it was five characters or less. And that way, by putting them in your language folder, you can select them as a play track value here and here. I have one more thing to show you, and that's in order to have your radio not treat T5 and T6 like trim switches, which means every time you use them, it's gonna beep at you. And eventually, if you use them enough, it'll go out of range and say maximum trim reach. We don't wanna hear that. So the way you get rid of that is press the model button and then go over to the flight modes tab and then change on flight mode zero, the last two values. This is T5, set that to dash dash and set T6 to dash dash. And that way when you use T5 up and down, you won't get trim beeps or out of range messages, which is really annoying if you're trying to use T5 as a momentary switch. Be creative. There's probably ways you can find to use this that might work for you. The idea was to give you the logic and let you see how you can use the timers to increment those global variables and then to read those values out of the global variables for use on your setup. I hope you found this information useful, and if you did, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.